Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Henry Pona, also known as Dr. Ali. This is a continuation to the part of the upper limb one, which is mainly the distal part of the free upper limb. So before we, go, we are going to continue, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video, and for those that have been subscribing, thank you so much. We love you. God bless. The hand. So what we'll be talking about is the hand since we've discussed about the forehand. So the next thing we'll be talking about is the hand. And we are going to be considering just three course outlines from the hand in order to understand the hand. The first part will be the introduction. The second part will be the surface of the hand. The third part will be the bones and last joints present in the hand. The hand is a distal free part of the upper limb. It is distal to the forearm. It is distal to the forearm. This is the forearm. So the next segment or part of the upper limb is the hand. That's why it's distal to the forearm. Why the forearm is brought him out to the hand. The hand is surrounded by the carpus, the carpus or the carpal bones, the metacarpal bones, and the phalanges. The hand consists of the palma, the dorsal, and the wrist. Yet, Looking at our anatomical, so looking at our surface anatomy of the upper limb, here is the region of the wrist, the wrist, while here, since this is the anterior surface of the upper limb, we have the arm of the hand. So, from the proximal end of the wrist, we have the palm of the hand. Then we have the, dos the dorsum of the hand, the dorsum of the hand, The surface of the hand. So we are done with the introduction of the hand. The next course outline we'll be talking about is the surface of the hand. So the hand is divided into two surfaces, which include the palmar surface, the palmar surface of the hand. and the dorsal surface of the hand. The palmar surface of the hand and the dorsal surface of the hand. So, like in our introduction, I already told us that the hand consists of the wrist, the palmar surface of the hand and the dorsal surface of the hand. So this is the palmar surface of the hand. This, you can see in my hand. This is the palmar surface of the hand. While looking at the posterior surface of the upper limb, this is the dorsum of the hand, which is this the dorsum of the hand. So do not forget, we have just two surfaces of the hand: the palmar surface of the hand and the dorsal surface of the hand. The third course outline under the hand region is the bones of the hand. There are many bones in the hand. Most of the bones are found in the hand. So under the bones, we have just three parts of bones of, of the hand as a whole. So I'll be dragging my bone here because there's no space at this part. So we have three parts. We have the first is called the carpal bones.
a cup of bones. The next is the metacarpal bone. Remember, also known as the MC bones. The last is the phalanges. So each of these subsections, we'll talk about them individually and we we'll now see how it's going, this diagram is going to help us. The carpal bones, so permit me, I'm going to write it on the board. The carpal bones consist of eight bones. It is divided into two rows, small row, distal row, starting from the lateral side of the hand to the medial side of the hand. So they consist of eight bones, like I said earlier. So let's consider the proximal row. So ready, we have the proximal carpal bones, the distal carpal bones, yeah, since they are plural. So each of them, they share all the eight bones of the carpal bone. The first is having four bones, while the second is having equal four bones. So we have four bones here, and we have four bones here. So from the proximal carpal bone, from our diagram here, beginning from the lateral side, the lateral side, let's clean this part. To the medial side, at least from here down to this side. So the first bone will be considered from the proximal row, that is part of the proximal carpal bone, is sorry, is the scaphoid. The scaphoid. So the next bone, which is and this is the scaphoid, sorry. This is the scaphoid. This is the scaphoid. From our diagram, this is the scaphoid, and it's the most lateral proximal bone of the carpal bone. So don't forget. So the next bone medial to it is the nunit. So this is the nunit. So I'll drop it down. And we have our unit. One that is medial to the unit is the triquetrum, which is placed here. The triquetrum. Now, one funny thing about the triquetrum, the triquetrum allows the, the next bone medial to it to sit over it. And that bone is called the pisiform. And it is the most medial proximal carpal bone of the carpal bones. So we have just four bones from the proximal row of the carpal bones. The first bone from the distal carpal bone, from the lateral end, is the trapezium. So I will tag it as one, and I will bring it down, down to this side. Then we have our trapezium. 
Now, the next one that is medial to it is the trapezium. This is trapezium. The next one, trapezium. So I'll be tagging it as two. The second one. So we'll bring it down. Try. Trapezoid. So this trapezium, trapezoid. Don't forget, this part has the sium pronunciation of the trapezium, and right here has the zoid pronunciation of the trapezoid. Don't forget. Then the third bone medial to the um, trapezoid is the capitate. The capitate. And the capitate is the largest bone of the carpal bones. So it is an insight, don't forget. The capitate, just like capital, capitate. Remove the um, L here and substitute TE, you have your capitate. Then the fourth bone will be considering which is the most. Uh, medial bone of the distal carpal bone, just like the pisiform from the proximal carpal bone, is the amit. So amit is the most medial bone of the distal carpal bone. So don't forget. So most questions we we are normally asked at this point or from the carpal bone is which of the following is the most lateral bone of the proximal carpal bone, which is easy. We've said it before, is the carpoid. Then while from the proximal carpal bone, sorry, the most medial bone is the PC form, which is here. Well, then going down this out to the uh, carpal bone, we have the distal carpal bone, and the most lateral bone present here is the trapezium, while the most medial bone in the distal carpal bone is the hamlet. So the trapezium is anonymous to the scaffold in terms of position, while the hamlet is anonymous to the piston in terms of position. So let me just write them down here. So these work together. One. Wow. Wow, these two have the same position. So these two from the proximal carpal bone, this is the most lateral, while the trapezium is the most lateral from the distal carpal bone. While the PC form is the most lateral from the proximal carpal bone, and the hamlet is the most medial. Sorry if I said PC form is the most lateral, I mean most medial, while the hamlet is the most medial bone from the distal carpal bone. The metal carpal bone. Next set of bones we consider is the metacarpal, what's known as the MC bone. So I'll just put MC bone here. So we have five bones that form the metacarpal bone. The first bone, which is lateral, or the first metacarpal bone. The second metacarpal bone, the third. 
that the fourth and the fifth metacarbabulins in most media metacarbabulins. The phalanges has just 14 bones that makes it up. From our diagram, inferior to the metacarpal bones, we have our phalanges. So, in summary, from the end, the carpal bone consists of just eight bones. Don't forget the proximal row and the distal row, each having four four bones. While the metacarpal bones has just five bones. Then from the phalanges, we have 14 bones, which makes it the part of the hand that has more bones compared to other parts. Then the total bones of the hand are just 27. Adding this up will just give you a total sum of 27 bones. Joints of the hand. Now we have six major joints of the hand. The first joint of the hand is the wrist joint. The wrist joint is formed between the radius of the forearm and the proximal bones that form the, the, the proximal upper bone. Don't forget. Remember the upper bone is divided into two. And this so from our diagram, we we'll see that the proximal rows are more proximal to the or close to the movie. So this is where our uh, wrist joint is from. This is from the mid-key, the red one. The wrist joint is also called the radio upper joint. Now, the second joint of the hand is the interpapal joint, that is, the joint that is formed between the upper bones. It can be between the proximal upper bones or the from here I'll be dragging them so that we can have our inter carpal bone sorry inter carpal joint so the next joint we are having in the hand is the inter carpal joints. So the third joint of the hand is the joint that is formed between the distal carpal bones and the metacarpal bones. So um, our third joint, and that joint is called the carpal metacarpal joint. Carpal metacarpal joint. The joint between the carpal bone, specifically the distal carpal bones. Don't forget the distal carpal bones and not the proximal carpal bones. So let's make use of another marker. So from here, 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 and here, we have a kappa, sorry, kappa, metha, kappa joints. Yes. So the next joint will be um, considering is the joint that is formed between the metacarpal bones and that is called the intermetacarpal bones. Just like the way we have the intercarpal bones, we have the inter 
meta kappa joints please whenever i said bones please it's joints not bones please and then the fifth joint of the hand is the joint that is formed between the carpal, sorry, the metacarpal bones and the phalanges. That's the bones that make up the phalanges. And this is called the metacarpal phalangeal joints. The metacarpal phalangeal joints. So, uh, fifth joint. Metacarpal phalangeal joints, joints, and from our diagram, this is this is the metacarpal joints. So the metacarpal joints. So the metacarpal bones. Um, we have the joints at this point. From here, from here, from here, here, and here. So, this is our method couple phalangeal joints. And lastly, the sixth joints of the hand is the interphalangeal joints. And it is formed between the um, distal phalanx, middle phalanx, and proximal phalanx of the phalanges. So, um, I will just indicate it from one of the bones. So, let's consider the proximal phalanx, sorry, the distal phalanx, which is here, this side, this side, this side, this side, and also here. So, from here, down to this side, to this side, there, and here. They all form the inter, let's signify it as IP joint. It's just a short form of inter phalangeal joint. So we can also call um, the first joint of the hand, the RC joint, while the second joint has the IC joint. This is the RC joint, IC joint. The third, the short name to it is the CMC joint, that is at this point. M here and the C here. Then the fourth joint is having the I M joint. I M joint. While the fifth, the fifth joint of the hand have a short name known as the M C joint. M C joint. While the last joint which is the interphalangeal joint, is having the I and the P joint as its short name. So this is all for now. And this marks the end of the video. So we've spoken about the parts of the opening. In summary, it's divided into four parts. The shoulder, the arm, the forearm, and the hand, and the hand is the last part of the part of the upper limb. So please kindly subscribe to our channel. Also, 
lay your comments on the comment section and like the video. Thank you.